guys. We're live. We're live. Oh my gosh. Hey everyone, welcome to another Webflow Workshop. I'm your host Nelson. This is a special day. We are streaming live from the Webflow HQ in San Francisco. Oh, this is fun. So we're going to meet you, the community, and vice versa. We want you guys to meet the Webflow family. Uh, some people that you may have met online, on Twitter or something, or uh, some people you haven't met yet that work behind the scenes to make Webflow what it is today. And um, just want to go around the room and let everyone introduce themselves. So yeah, let's, uh, let's start on this side. Some of you may already have known him, but here he is, Hello. Mr. Happy. I'm Waldo. <laughs> I'm a customer happiness hero manager here at Webflow, and I work out of St. Louis, Missouri. Super stoked to be here. So, thank you. All right. Um, I'm Bart. Uh, probably know me from the forums mostly. Uh, I'm a QA in Webflow. I'm trying to break before you guys do that. Um, and I work remotely from uh, Bitbush from Poland. Hey guys, I'm Alejandra. I'm a front end software engineer, and I work from Mexico City, and I'm super excited to meet you all. Hey guys, I'm Barrett. Uh, I work here in the uh, San Francisco headquarters and I'm on the marketing team. Hi everyone, I'm Linda. I'm on the product team and I'm working straight from San Francisco HQ. Hey everyone, I'm Alex. Uh, I was recently a community member. I uh, just joined Webflow last month. Um, I'm based in Vancouver and I joined the QA team. Yeah. Hey, I'm Ryan. Um, I'm a brand designer here in San Francisco. Hey everybody, I am Sergi. Uh, you may know me from um, those shows. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm all over the place. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm Sergi. I, I do a lot of different things here at Webflow. I'm involved in with the design team, with the product team, and recently with the education team. And, and I'm in what? And you found it. Uh, yeah, I, I, did, I did some things. Uh, it's nice meeting you guys. Awesome, awesome. So um, before we actually get into the questions, uh, let's give a big shout out to uh, the EDU team for launching Webflow University today. Good job. So, uh, if you haven't got your email yet, uh, they did launch it last night. How late were you guys <laughs> up <laughs> launching what, this what, thing? What do you mean launching what specifically? Because the last video that we actually launched was at like six in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> did no, you even <laughs> sleep? We finished like the last CMS video and put press publish <laughs> like after the email went out actually. I don't know if anybody noticed that. I, I went to bed as soon as I got home and I woke up and I was like, okay, back to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Have you ever have you ever launched something and the like the material in the launch wasn't ready yet? And luckily it was like, you know, at the very end of the, the courses. So you're like, oh, hopefully nobody gets that far in the course. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it was, it was funny. Great job. And uh, Ryan, uh, your, your, your designs for the Webflow University, it's so slick and, and gradients all over the place. Like, man, where do, you, um, where do you get the inspiration to make something unique? Oof. That's a hard question. Um, I've kind of been developing the Webflow brand style over time, so like a year and change. Um, so this kind of gradient-y thumbnail style is kind of just developed internally, I feel like, mostly. <laughs> yeah. oh, cool. Uh, uh, so Barrett, um, this whole experience of launching um, uh, Webflow University, what has been like one of the biggest hurdles that you got over? The biggest hurdles was, I mean, we've, I've, I was saying this last night, this is one of the most complicated launches we've done in a long time. It's not as directly impactful to maybe some of the existing users because they're already pros maybe. Yeah. Um, but there are just a lot of moving pieces. Sergi's really been doing most of this. I've jumped in kind of the la la last stage of it. Um, but, you know, almost 120 videos, all these courses, all the management of the domain switching and, and getting all the little details in the right places before we could launch it. Um, it. That was the biggest, that was the most challenging part of it for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it basically took over the help center. 
and like so many new videos had to be made, so many redirects for the URLs. Man, so great job, you guys! Great job. Um, while we're taking some questions from, uh, we already had some questions sent in from the Designership Slack channel, also on Twitter. So we're going to go through some of those questions. But also, if you have questions, go ahead and put them in the live chat room right now. And yeah, we would love to hear from you guys. All right, so first thing from uh, Michael Wong from uh, Designership, uh, whoever wants to take this one. Uh, does, the design, does the design team at Webflow perform user research? If so, with who and how? Anyone want to take this? Um, I could start that. Uh, I work closely with the design team and with the product team. And uh, it, it depends on the type of launch uh, we do. Some launches have a much bigger impact, like for example, with interactions, um, we want to make sure that different types of users, uh, experienced users who know Webflow very well and ones that don't know Webflow at all, um, can figure, kind of get, get around interactions. Because uh, there are some um, complex concepts there, but we do want to condense all those um, all those powerful ideas into uh, intuitive uh, UI that anybody can use or anybody can learn to use. Uh, and part of that is user research. Um, and for example, last week we actually did six different um, in-person, or not in-person, over the internet, um, user uh, kind of testing. Uh, we recorded six different people using interactions for the first time just to get an idea of how, what they struggle with, um, what they what they enjoy, like what if we're to create a kind of an onboarding experience, what that would look like, um, and I would say that we we're incorporating it more and more <clears throat> into our product process. Um, so it, it the way I see it is kind of like a beta period. Uh, we at times we we kind of would launch features without a beta period, but now um, with with you know features being more powerful and, and reaching so many different parts of, or touching so many different parts of Webflow, um, that user testing is super important. Speaking of user testing, I know that um, Linda is doing the Follow Me Home program. And so it just shows that we're really, really in tune with the community. Can you, um, can you tell us some things that we've learned so far from it, or like um, why you think this is very important um, for our community? Um, yeah, to give everyone some background, the Follow Me Home program was inspired by a program done at Intuit, um, especially to, as two of our founders, both Vlad and Ryan, came from Intuit. Um, and it's designed so that it's not just designers or product managers or even customer success who's talking to customers. We wanted to send everyone, including our engineers, our QA engineers, um, anyone that works at our company so that they have a chance to talk to our customers and become empathetic to what it is that they're doing. So that when we're building out a product, um, we're building it out to, our, to the right person, the person that is using it. Um, so far we've done three to four Follow Me Homes with different people in the San Francisco area. Um, and it's really interesting to hear the perspectives of engineers specifically in terms of things that the engineers expected our users to be doing, such as using shortcuts, um, and other readily made tools that comes naturally to engineers, but a lot of our customers, these designers, aren't using these aspects, and it's using this information and figuring out how do we make these things more apparent to our users so that their flow becomes much faster and much more effective. Yeah. We also did testing for, you know, Ryan and I worked on the new marketing site last year, and we did some user testing with the old site, you know, usertesting.com is a super easy way to do that. Um, so it's product and even yeah. our marketing yeah. and messaging. So. Um, and then I also want to call out that like user research, we do it before we even start working on a product. And the most common way we do this is either by code emailing our customers or even sending out surveys through the wish list. And I think what's brilliant about our customer base is that everyone's so involved with the product that we're getting hundreds of responses back to these surveys within days. Yeah. Um, I want to go to uh, I want to go to Alejandra because uh, she I think she's the only developer in here. Yeah. 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 Representing. Yeah. Representing yeah. engineers. 
So you're more of the behind the scenes of the whole operation. So can you tell us like one feature that you helped launch and what was that uh, experience like? <laughs> yeah, I mean, since I started working on Webflow, I think that was like uh, nine months ago. Uh, the team was already working on this amazing, amazing new stage of workflow, which it's something that you don't see, you know, when you're using the product, but we were changing the complete architecture. The project was called Canvas Next, oh. and that's actually about enabling the whole designer to be built in React. Yeah. Some of you guys, if you are a little bit more technical oriented, you know JavaScript, React is an amazing library that's built in, in Facebook. And what will what this will mean to you, like users, is that this is a first step towards the plugins API. Yes. This, this yeah. will enable other um, developers and designers to do you know the same specific components and be able to play around with workflow. And you know the sky's the limit. So yeah, we we just launched that um, the last week of July. Yes. It was amazing. Congrats yeah. on that. <laughs> it, 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 it was really fun. I can tell you that working behind the scenes of workflow is just as fun as working with workflow. So. Nice, nice. Um, for uh, for Bart and Alex, you guys started as community members, like really hardcore fans of Webflow, and you're all every day in the Webflow forums helping the community. And so you, for you, more, more, most recently, uh, switched over to the other side. And see, and now you see things that happen in the uh, behind the scenes. Um, what was that experience like, uh, switching over to the other side? And um, how do you feel? Uh, how do you feel that it benefits the community that you are fans first? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll go. Um, yeah, no, I th I think that uh, the fact that I was always looking into Webflow as, whoa, I need to push it a little bit further, right? Which certainly probably remembers me from the forums like, okay, I need this, I need this, when this will be up? <laughs> uh, I was always trying to, to come up with ideas that I would use, and I was like, why not sharing that with people? And I was just helping people around on the forums, um, and by the time, like, it will be two years for me in September, since I joined Webflow, uh, time flies so fast, and I really love that Right now, like Webflow back in 2013 changed my life entirely. Like I was able to make a living out of it and it's, it's freaking great. Now I am on the side helping the team, helping this, this amazing company work with an amazing team to change other people's lives. So they can expect, they can, uh, kind of experience the same thing that I had. And I think it's, it's amazing that uh, I, can, I can finally help more people by breaking Webflow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would, I would echo a lot of that. Um, I would say when I joined the Webflow community in the forum, you guys were really what kept me around the longest, just how helpful everyone is, um, making me feel like I almost had a design company behind me, like users and the staff, um, and to join the team and basically like, see them as like more more real and more human like than maybe just a blog post or a forum post um just it's hard to describe the feeling <laughs> understood um and, and while though, uh, lastly you were also a community member mm -hmm. and you kept everyone as happy as possible in the community. <laughs> and now you're doing the same thing, not only for the community, but also the Webflow families, yeah. you know? So um, uh, being a customer at Happiness Lead, um, how, does, how does that make you even happy? Is that even possible? Um, <laughs> I mean, I guess like, I have the opportunity to voice all the pain points that, you know, the custom, like all the wonderful customers out there you have so much amazing feedback and getting like getting that accumulating that and sharing that with the team making sure we fix all the bugs or anything that's out there um, that's wonderful to be able to be involved in that process so yeah I love yeah. our customers <laughs> I, love, I love workflow it changed my life so. <laughs> it's changing a lot of people's lives yeah. Uh, so we ha um, have some questions in the live chat room so let's go to uh, 
can't. Babak S, uh, where do you guys see Webflow in five years? Hmm. Anyone want to take this? Where do you? I hope the rocket ships. <laughs> We're building Mars. rocket ships. Mars. To, to Mars on their division. <laughs> we have to diversify. <laughs> Probably some kind of like uh, genetically engineered seed that is, uh, you know. <laughs> That's just my idea, anyways. You know. <laughs> Drag and drop DNA sequencing. Okay. <laughs> no, I guess yeah. I see Webflow being opened up a lot more to to more people um, and to integrate with more systems. Um, there'll be a lot more ways to use outside resources inside of Webflow, um, and even that once inside Webflow, there's going to be a lot more tools to make awesome stuff. Faster. It could actually be like a one tool to rule them all. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I see it as a, a much bigger ecosystem of um, people providing tools for other people, um, people sharing layouts, um, even sharing kind of uh, tutorials and, and showing people how to do amazing things. but. I, I see it as a, a much bigger community um, and a big ecosystem where people just have all the resources at their disposal to really build anything. And that, that's just the ecosystem, uh, but I also see the, the tool becoming more flexible, more powerful. Um, like, you, obviously, you'd be able to do a lot more in five years, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, it, yeah, I, I definitely imagine it to be the, the kind of the service or product that you point people to, if people ask, oh, can I, can I build that? Like, oh, of course. Yeah. yeah, you can build that. Easy. Well, what about this, this, and this, and this? And it's like, well, yeah, you can. <laughs> um, I love that mindset. Of course we can build that. Yeah. So. Um, got one, another one from Slack. Um, says, how does Webflow prioritize features and releases um, how do you juggle between user feedback and roadmap priorities? So I think that's a Linda question. How do we prioritize? Do you want to take this, Sophie? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it, we're, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, no. I mean, it's it's not easy. Um, we we absolutely love our customers. We absolutely love our community, and and that's why the wish list is a big thing that we're constantly looking at. Um, in the end, our roadmap is designed, as Sergi said, to empower almost anyone to start building things, right? Um, and in the end, that does help the community. And so in terms of prioritizing, we're looking at things that customer wants, but also things that helps us move forward in that vision. And those are usually going to be the number one things. And after that, it's things that customer needs and everything, and then also enhancements and bugs after that. Um, it's, it's a process, um, but I think we've gotten it down pretty accurately to make sure we're building the right things and we're spending our time as effectively as possible. Um, and we're not hesitant to reserving engineering time to work on like, technical debt projects like the one that Alejandro was working on earlier, um, while also making sure that customer retains the experience that they've always been getting. Um, do you have anything to add? Yeah, it's, um, it's hard to always be uh, kind of let the, the user base know how we're improving the tools if, if we're making it more stable or um, you know making sure the, the hosted sites are faster or um, just like in, improving performance or even the idea of like okay for now in the season let's try to make Webflow um, uh, easier to use for more people versus building more features. Um, that kind of stuff that uh, the users won't be able to kind of see or experience because they're maybe they expect new things that allow them to do more um, but we always have to think oh how can we reach more people how can we empower more people um, and how can we make webflow more stable and um, have a bigger impact so yeah there's a lot of considerations um, but yeah we the wish list is is an awesome resource that that is we always consider and and we it's 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 like if there's if there's somebody saying the same thing over and over and over and over again, yeah. especially a thousand people, <laughs> yeah. and even include like for example cross site copy paste, like yeah. everybody here 
tells everybody else, like, uh, I have to rebuild that in a new project. Because yeah. everybody here uses Webflow. Yeah. So it's like, we, we, we upvote all the top things as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, it's like we, we feel the pain, uh, similar types of pain as our, as our users. Um, but we also have to balance out all the other kind of considerations. Yeah, it's, uh, a, it's a fine line to, to walk. Yeah. And, um, yeah, kudos to you guys for, for doing it. Um, okay, let's take a left field, uh, out of the blue question. Um, Wild Man asks, what kind of shampoo does Sergi use? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a serious question? Yeah. I can answer that. It's, in here. <laughs> it's a really question. Um, it's a really good question. Shampoo next. Shampoo next. Alright. I have, I have like peach fuzz on my ears. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna keep it soft, so. <laughs> So conditioner. 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 Just all the way. Huh? <laughs> okay. All right. Um, let's see here. Oh, this is a good one from Hannah. This is um, from uh, this is the designer ship as well. What differenti differentiates you from other competitors? So anyone? I think. There it is. Yeah. yeah? <laughs> uh, so. Depends. There's a lot of different types of companies trying to help people build websites or just generally build for the web. Um, uh, I think a lot of people, maybe for us when we walk around, or maybe when you tell, you know, when you customers tell other friends about tools you're using, um, usually they think, well, that's like a Squarespace or a Wix, right? And we say, well, not quite. And certainly that comparison is probably pretty easy for all of you to understand. We're more on the professional side. Um, when it comes to kind of one of our bigger competitors, I'd say WordPress. Um, we like to think that, you know, we try to make a lot a lot of things more visually, you know, manipulated directly in the canvas. Like that's why our CMS makes that such a big difference. You have a lot more kind of control over, you know, your design, kind of directly working with it um, in the designer. Um, I think I think kind of the bigger difference and a lot of the ways that I see us standing in the market is that we don't really shy away from giving our users a lot of power in the product. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can try to abstract how you can build for the web. Um, and a lot of people have tried to do it in different ways. But um, I think we started with, I've heard different people say, um, it's a lot easier to start from you know, the raw technology and then abstract backwards than it is to abstract all the way, um, full abstraction, then try and work backwards and bring in more power. And so I think it's been good for, for I think that's we've seen success because we've Kind of brought the power of complex, complex technology um, to a product that's fairly kind of understandable and, and learnable for for designers, um, and we've not shied away from trying to do complex things um, time and time again. And so I think I think that's one of the bigger differences. Um, oh, that's good answer. Oh, okay, I thought you were gonna add more. <laughs> no, I can. Uh, I guess like a somewhat close competing tool that kind of maybe feels a bit like Webflow is still trying to be a design tool before like a web design tool. Yeah. I think what Webflow is really good at is respecting the web first. And yeah. that's, maybe you can't just drag something across the screen, but like you shouldn't be able to, you know? Yeah, um, not but, everything's position absolute. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. Um, I think this one would be for um, Alejandra or, or Bart. Um, it's from Pete in the live chat room. He's asking, uh, just curious about Webflow's tech stack. So I'm not a developer, so I'm guessing okay. what you guys use. Uh, it's actually a pretty complex tech stack. Uh, I'm part of the front end team, so we're uh, basically Webflow is a 100% JavaScript uh, platform. Mm -hmm. So we use Node.js, uh, partly on the back end. On the front end, there are some places where we have no code yes still, uh, mainly the dashboard and the editor, and the rest mm. is now React JS. Yes. Mm. Basically, that's that, that's our main stack. Uh, we use around uh, you know a lot of uh, different platforms that will security etc. But yeah, when it comes to to libraries, these these are the ones. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, that answers your question, Pete. Um, let's see here. Okay, I guess I guess this is one for Waldo because it seems more of like a support question. Yeah. But I haven't thrown you any questions yet. Uh, what happens to our account 
if uh, Webflow goes out of business, which we're not. I mean, that's it's not something we're planning on doing. <laughs> um, but I mean, you can export sites if you need to host them externally. Um, but you're going to have a much stronger hosting stack if you're hosting with Webflow. Hmm. It's a lot simpler to just click publish and launch your site <laughs> than exporting, uploading FTP, <laughs> and dealing with all of the crazy bugs or hacks that can happen yeah. when you host in there. So. Trials you love this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, okay, so this is back on user testing. This is from uh, Slack. From JP is asking, uh, from your user testing, what was the most surprising or unexpected insight you gained? Trying to think of the FT stuff. Could you I think I think so. We we uh, maybe six months ago we did a, a big round of user testing. Maybe like fifteen people. Fifteen people. Fifteen yeah. people. Yeah. Uh, just g gauging their first time experience using Webflow. Uh -huh. I think that the general um, kind of takeaway, not so much surprise, but the general takeaway was like people struggled. <laughs> like Webflow is, is a very powerful tool. You can do a lot with it, but it take it. It's not. It's not just like it doesn't just come naturally. Uh, you have to understand some concepts. You have to understand how you know boxes stack on top of each other, or they stack inside of each other, and the the height of things is based on the content inside of each box and things like that. And so these aren't these aren't you know traditional concepts you learn as a designer. Um, they're 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 very fundamental to how the web works, mm -hmm. and this it, they're required to be able to build responsive websites and interactive websites yeah. uh, that scale depending on you know the viewport width um, of the device that you have. Um, so the people that you uh, were user testing with at that time, they didn't uh, fully understand the concepts of HTML and CSS. Yeah, they just didn't didn't understand the the core web concept, so it's it's kind of, you get thrown into this tool with all this power. Yeah. Um, so we realize how, how difficult it is for new users to, to get in, so. Um, and that's why you built this. Hey, quick plug, <laughs> Webflow <laughs> University, university at webflow.com, check it out. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, and so is, is that why univers uh, the university was made? You're trying to figure out a way to get people to understand these concepts before they hop into Webflow? Totally. I mean, if you look at our, our other resources that we, uh, that we had before, all these 120 new videos, we didn't really cover those concepts well. Uh, mm -hmm. We actually, I, don't, I, I, think, I think we taught people to build certain things, but we never covered those core concepts. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think this, uh, these courses that we provide d do a much better job. Um, even wa just watch like the box model video, yeah. Um, and it, you'll <laughs> understand box. how everything's made of boxes and how things push off, you know, against each other, and and just understanding that's very valuable. And even comparing, oh, web design is more of like a, a word document than a PowerPoint or a Photoshop document where you can move things anywhere. Yes. Um, so, so yeah, like that was a pretty powerful realization and helps us to kind of think how can we introduce people to these concepts. Uh, inside the designer, are there creative ways we can do that? Um, I mean, there's a traditional way of education, but we're always thinking of ways to to make make our product more intuitive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for this is a great one from uh, Antonio. He's asking, any plans to make websites in Webflow uh, any, to no. make more accessible websites uh, in Webflow? Uh, for people with disabilities, sorry. Yeah. Any, do we have any features for accessibility? Yeah. Um, so we've. This is this is one of the things. Uh, so we just came back from a retreat, and one of the um, things we heard is just, hey, how can we make Webflow more accessible um, for people with disability? Um, and this that's one of those things that uh, we're we want to put on a roadmap. Um, and make sure we prioritize and think like take a multi-language support yeah. as an example that's similar in a sense um, and, it's, and, and how it 
allows the designer or a client to provide that website or that content to more people, um, the accessibility type features will will provide that kind of. Um, yeah. We've also uh, John put together a big blog post about best practices for mm -hmm. creating a website so that screen readers can read it and, and that kind of yeah. stuff. So if you check the blog or just Google Webflow accessibility best practices, you'll probably find that. We can send that along too. All right. All right. Uh, from the YouTube live chat again from Scott. This is a big one. <laughs> Anyone want to take this? Interactions 2.0. Cancelled. JK. Full steam ahead. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I know. Everybody's uh, like had a heart attack. <laughs> How the users like. No way. No. What's the question? That's the question. Interactions. What's going on with yeah. interactions? Um, yeah. Yeah, I can. I can provide an update. So. Uh, you guys have seen, probably seen Ryan tease out some awesome things he's built, and those aren't just fake, those are real. Um, we've been using, <laughs> we've been using a, a working version of it uh, internally for about two weeks or so. Um, there's obviously bugs, and we're, we're testing it for that reason. We're trying to make sure it works. We're also um, sharing it with internally to try and surface how we can improve it. Um, and, and right now we're running very small uh, set of uh, kind of tests, as Sergio mentioned before, um, just to get more and more feedback. But a beta, a public beta, to release to the, all the people who have asked for it, uh, is not too far away. Um, we have always shied away from giving precise <laughs> deadlines because <laughs> software is complicated. Um, <laughs> but uh, I can I, I, I can say it's. I won't. I won't say specific dates because I'll get in trouble. But um, <laughs> I, we've been able to build some really cool stuff with it. So that shows you how far along it is. Um, and a lot of the stuff there was kind of a long time where we were developing it, where there wasn't really much to show because a lot of what was going on was just kind of the designers putting together the actual little UI components. And so everything's kind of come together in pieces over the last two months, and it's really been progress has gone from. Perception, you know, because what you can see and actually interact with has been very little, but then all of a sudden it's gone from zero to not 100, but <laughs> <laughs> quite a lot of progress. So it's it's very very soon, and um, we'll be releasing a, a demo video it's soon, uh, hopefully next week, kind of giving you guys a quick example of something Ryan built, and and we'll be kind of walking through, just you know, giving you a, a sense of the, how the actual product works. Um, to get you guys even more excited, uh, and then we'll and then we'll allow it. Well, then we'll open it up uh, for everyone to test out and play before we do kind of a full launch in the fall. Um, so during that beta period, we'll be asking everyone to share, you know, what things they've built, and uh, obviously provide feedback as they have it. Um, and then in the fall, we'll do a big, full-fledged Webflow launch of Interactions 2.0. As mainly a fan of Webflow, and I know that the whole community cannot wait, and we've been waiting a long time. But again, you guys, we're doing it for quality. We'll get it out to you, <laughs> and just hold on just a little bit longer. That's actually something I've learned when I joined Webflow. Before, as, as a user, I was like, why they are not giving some updates? <laughs> it, it's a process that takes the time, and it's all to make sure that each and one, each each of you guys. Uh, can jump in and everything will be intuitive. Everything will just work. Like you're like, oh yeah, that's 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 the way it should work, right? It's not like we don't want to give you hacky solutions. We don't want to give you something that will look like, oh, I don't want to learn it. No, we want to make sure that uh, everything is just top notch and you have the best experience ever on the web. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I can tell you from the engineering standpoint that. There is a lot of love being injected in, in this process. I mean, I'm not part of the Interaction Support Now team, but damn, those guys are talented and they put their hearts and their minds. And, you know, I'm, I'm constantly surprised to see what that team is accomplishing and the, yeah. the speed of the development and the quality of the development. It's something that Bart will have a hard time breaking. One of them will break some. <laughs> 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 We'll find it. <laughs>
How many how many engineers are working on in interactions? That's four. It. Four engineers. Yeah. Oh yeah. Four. Yeah. Full time. Yeah, four full time engineers. Four full time. And the f interactions one uh, Two took men? one. It was one engineer. <laughs> yeah. Same same guy. Dan Dan is also working on interactions too. Yeah. He's bringing his like you know past <laughs> experience. Um, but but, <laughs> yeah. but imagine the like just the the scale like how long it took to I think it took like three months to to launch Interactions One, and it was a great product and now it's taking us longer time but and more more people working on it but you know the intention is to build something that's going to last for the next five years. Yeah, longer time with a lot <coughs> more features. Yeah. Yeah. It, and, and even and even the like how we're thinking about building it we're, we're thinking about building this foundation that we can build on top of yeah um, whereas before it's just like hey let's just build this thing um, now we're thinking okay you know this would be great and then we can easily add this and this and this and this and yeah. v2 v3 v4 v5 so it's a lot of really cool stuff coming down yeah cool um, but don't so think about v5 yet <laughs> v1 guys <laughs> You mean V2? V2, V2 yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> They've already thought about one for a long time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's your weekly update on this <laughs> workshop. No more questions about it. <laughs> it's coming. Um, all right, let's take let's take a fun question. Anyone want to take this? What's the uh, from Naweed? Oh, it's a community mm -hmm. expert. What's the nerdiest thing that you do in your spare time? Well, the nerdiest. The nerdiest. We're in the, Watch in the epicenter of oh, just <laughs> I entered mine in there. But what, what did you say? I mean, I build websites, landing pages, 3D transform. That's true. Fun. That's literally, like, I do that to, like, oh, calm down. Calm down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I decompress, I build sites. <laughs> For fun. I play a lot. Yeah. Battlefield 1 recently. Yeah. It just chills me. But um, being a father is. Not that much time to play games anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And it can be very relaxing to do aerobic cues and play really? chess. It's, oh. like, it's good for the mind after a while. That's, that's nerdy. Yeah. After a long time, <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice. What else? I'm big on board games and I also <laughs> love jigsaw puzzles. Yeah. Board games are fun. Yeah. 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 I'll spend yeah. like hours in front of like a 5,000. <laughs> oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, like I'll take my entire Saturday. I will cancel like plans to go out. <laughs> 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 um, which is probably why my eyesight is so horrible at this point. It's not the computer screen. <laughs> I guess Linda won't. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I would. I would say I would, as soon as I turn off my computer, it's either the PlayStation Four or board games as well. Yeah. Literally have a wall of them in our apartment, just oh. ready to go. Yes. Recruit friends who have to like board games. Catan, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. board games, yes. Yeah. Totally. You know, yeah. yeah. Tic tac toe. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 oh. A simple man. <laughs> you should have. You should try Connect Four. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Race the car. <laughs> <laughs> Race the car. <laughs> I don't want to lose. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Um. Yeah, a lot of these questions now are just about um, future features. So I mean, those can we can, you know, we can easily take those to the forums unless you guys want to answer some of them. Like what? Um, implement. Oh, uh, Im Nita's asking implementing a CSS grid in the near future. Yeah, <laughs> that that's that's coming. Uh, at some point, we, we haven't talked too much. Like five but, years. No, there, there, there's already a dope uh, design. Like the, yeah. the, there's already some some visual explorations, and it's gonna be amazing. Like from a developer standpoint, just understanding CSS grid sometimes can can take a bit. Even if you know it's something simple, but it, it can take a bit. And the way it's being planned in the design is just it's mind blowing. There's also why the React Canvas was so important. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. The first part of this comes next. The React Canvas. Uh, will enable or is enabling, you know, the development of that. So yeah, we're excited. <laughs> right. um, okay, so this one is just a compliment. I just want to say a big thanks <laughs> to the team for creating the most unique and professional front end Woo! design tool. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> thanks, Peter. <laughs> You're the best. Um,
This one is for Sergi. Is YC still involved with Webflow? Um, not not super closely. There's times where we reach out to them, like different advisors, to get feedback on certain things. Mm -hmm. So it's it's great to have that network. Um, but we don't. It's it's not a kind of every month thing. Maybe a couple times a year we reach out. Hmm. Yeah, and also you asked how was that experience? But I think you've already recorded a video for think, <laughs> yeah. for TechCrunch. <laughs> you can find the, the recording. That was the the recording of how I got in. That was intense. Yeah, or how we got in. It was it was pretty crazy. It was was it for TechCrunch or? It was uh, no, it was to get into YC. No, I mean oh, like, where's the, the video? video? Where can you find it? Yeah, I think if you search uh, Webflow YC TechCrunch, you'll find a video with animations and everything. Okay. Um, yeah. But uh, but being in YC was is a lot of hard work. I mean, it's like it's it's an accelerator, so you have to accelerate your company and do whatever it takes. <laughs> so it was a lot of me, me, uh, Brent, and Vlad were just heads down for three or four months. Wow. Um, but it's it's awesome to yeah. to kind of dedicate and invest time into something and see it grow. Yep. Yep. From three to what are we at now? Uh, Thirty nine, forty. Too many. Too many. <laughs> For, keep forgetting Bart's name. Who's <laughs> <laughs> this guy? Fifty-two percent remote. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. percent yeah. of the people are remote. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty. Yeah, it's pretty neat that we're yeah. still we're still a family, even though it's like oh, 52, 52 countries. Fifteen. Or ten. Fifteen or ten? ten I think. Ten. Ten. Ten different countries. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's again, it still feels like a, a tight knit family. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's see here. What else do we got? Um, that actually answered another question on the, like how many people are working web for. Oh yeah. Around forty. Around 40. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Monica from Twitter is asking, I'd love to know a typical work day from the designers. Hmm. What's, what's your <laughs> typical work day, Ryan? Of, what kind of designers? <laughs> yeah, yeah, what yeah, kind of designers? Uh, maybe Ryan can give an answer yeah, to the brand no, of the Yeah. Um, so my, my job is largely working on like the marketing site, kind of our marketing websites. So really it's a lot of using Webflow. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that's that's really about it. I don't really des design outside of Webflow a whole lot besides uh, illustrating an illustrator. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of using don't, Webflow don't and illustrations. giving feedback <laughs> to, to Sergi and whatnot. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of illustrations and icons too, though. Yeah, a lot of that. Yeah, you dream in shapes. Dream in <laughs> geometric shapes, yeah. <laughs> gradients. And gradients. Gradients. Just the important stuff. Love those, love those. Make it look so clean, love it. Um, yes, Riley is asking, is Webflow University all made in Webflow? Of course, Riley. Yes. Ooh, can I tell a story about that? Okay, yes. okay. go for it. It blows my mind how powerful Webflow is. <laughs> I mean, I mean <laughs> like, Self like I am not, I'm not like, <laughs> I'm not preaching to the choir or anything. Like, I'm, I, there's so many, like, this is all built in the CMS, and there's so many connections, and, and it's kind of hacky. I mean, like, if, if we had this, like, advanced, you know, multi-level categorization CMS system, like, there might be easier ways to do something, but it's just crazy that I know nothing about databases, no, nothing about coding, but I can create, like, huge collections of courses and, guides and uh, you know present them in, in lists and, and just this the idea of uh, if you look at any of these courses there's a list if you scroll down here yeah. um, on the left keep going so that list right there the course outline yeah uh, there's an intro like that those are kind of section headings okay. and then the uh, underneath that are the actual videos so how do you create the section headings no. like I, I was like how the heck do you do this Conditional visibility is yes. amazing. Yes. Um, so what I pretty much did is I created uh, those section headings as items with everything else, and I have a switch, like a, a switch that says, "Is this a section heading?" Yeah. And when I have it have it switched on, and I have a specific order, like, "Oh, yeah. this one, the first section heading is, is zero, then the next one's one, two, three, four, five. Um, I can just sort it, and just using conditional visibility, hide something and show something, yeah. um, based on what what. Uh, field it has and it's like wow I just did this amazing thing that I would have to get help from an engineer and I, and I was able to throw it together um, 
So without conditional visibility, we, we wouldn't have uh, our help center. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty awesome. And actually, Webflow.com is building Webflow as well. Like, we, oh, yeah. We, oh yeah, we build everything. Our websites, yeah. Our yeah. Expert site, blog. Yeah, every every single marketing site we have is built on Webflow, which is pretty pretty awesome. Yeah, all use conditional visibility. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's just so it's just so fun to um, just to see like one of our co-founders still has. Uh, a passion to use Webflow and just gets his mind blown over features that were built a while back, and it just, you know, I, I just think that's uh, that's real. That's a, a real love for the tool, and it's not. You know. I also get my mind blown by the bugs <laughs> and the limitations. <laughs> so I'm always like, oh, we need to support that. Oh, we need to support that. Yeah. So really feeling feeling the customer's pain um, and putting my vote, vote down on all those small enhancements that <laughs> that I'm sure everybody runs into. So, um, hmm, uh, I'm not sure who's going to take this one from Daniel. He's asking, how do you manage uh, a remote team? Oh, you were typing it. I was, I was typing it out, but go ahead and say. It. I mean, we're using Slack all the time and communicate, communicate, communicate. Um, we have a very open communication policy between everyone here at Webflow. I highly, highly encourage that. So you can always be approachable and collaborate with each other. Uh, we also use you know, Asana for a lot of the internal projects or GitHub. Um, and and, and, I, would and even, GitHub. I would even say there's less, there's less, no one's really being managed. Like yeah, every single person that we hire is so self-driven and they are, as you as you've heard, all users of the product itself, right? So they want to make it better and stronger, and that makes working together and hitting hitting our deadlines and dates mm -hmm. that we're not going to share <laughs> <laughs> so much e like our internal dates so much easier because we, we want to push out this stuff because we want to help everyone, including ourselves, right, mm -hmm. um, with this product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of trust. You mm -hmm. trust everyone to yeah. do what they're gonna. do. Yeah, do their the, work the, and get it done. The most important part is that um, each and every person that works at Webflow is really passionate about Webflow. Yeah. Yeah. So we really want to move it forward. <laughs> That's why like nobody has to even watch us. Like we just want to make things done. Yeah. yeah. And uh, then we work, 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 work. Also video calls. A lot of video, video calls. Yeah. Video video calls. Yeah. 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 And we have a chance like to come every every three months to to the office, mm -hmm. or we just yeah. need a retreat. Mm -hmm. So yeah, spending time together also Your first time. Time makes it. Mm -hmm. yes. you know, it's, it's great to see face to face the people that we work you know remotely mm -hmm. the rest of the year. So yeah. it's fun. And a, a few weeks ago, we started a program where every week we get paired with a random person in the company, mm -hmm. yes. um, which are usually remote to SF office people, and you just chat for like a half hour and get to know someone you don't really it's know that well. Okay. And I love that, you know, always yeah. learning about people. Yeah, yeah. Everyone here has a has a very interesting story, and so far, in being at the retreat, uh, you know, these where people are coming from and why they're passionate about Webflow and why they join the team. It's again, it's for the community, it's for the web design industry, and that's what I totally love about this family. And everyone's really working for the the industry to make it better. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, Vlad's in the live chat. Is it a Vlad or is it a Vlad? He's the Vlad. He's the. Um, I think. Anything else from you guys? Uh, Jose saying, hi, I'm an architect and designer, and I found your tool very useful. Keep up the good work. Awesome. Yay. Uh, awesome. Tim is in the, if you guys remember Tim, Tim's B, he's in the chat room. Oh, yeah. Some guy named Vlad says, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Some guy named Vlad. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess this is a good one to learn about you guys more. Um, Babak is asking, where did everyone work before Webflow? Anyone want to take this? Webflow's my life. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't work before Webflow. <laughs> I was working for Hirsch and Family Entertainment. Uh, so you might know about the Harlem Globetrotters or some of the other cities, a lot of really fun theme parks. 
we used Webflow for everything that we did. <laughs> um, building all the landing pages, marketing, HTML5 ads. Yeah. I worked in a <laughs> Polish IT company as a QA and a support team. So it was a good transition for me. <laughs> yeah, I, I think also freelance web designer and developer for oh, like nine awesome. years. Oh, mm -hmm. So I started working as a developer in a digital agency in Mexico. And then I decided that I was falling in love with the startups and what flow came in. I was, uh, I was doing copywriting and, and blog writing and eventually that grew into just general marketing at a different tech startup here in San Francisco. Um, I worked at a video ad network, so yes, an evil company. <laughs> <laughs> and I decided to turn my life around and uh, do good. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was a freelance web designer and developer for the last four years or so. And then before that, I was a city planner for a brief time. I was a designer at an agency called Rosetta um, on the Samsung team, doing like Samsung.com mostly. Uh, I was kind of a freelance web designer, um, and then I started working at this skate shop and surf shop down in San Diego, um, and then I got into UI design, um, and so it was kind of like you know product UI design and then web design meet and mm -hmm. Webflow. Um, and we were we meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> it was meant to be. Um, Stu's asking, can we have a tour? Francisco's like, plus one for the tour. I'm with Francisco. <laughs> oh, you want a tour? We're a little wired. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of wires, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no wire in the trip. Yeah, you guys we are... Can, there's a video of the... Uh, the Travis, oh. Travis did the video, the tour. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, right, right. Yeah. So, Where's, where can they find that? Uh, YouTube. Oh, yeah. <laughs> can you post the link? Yeah. Okay, yeah, there, there is a YouTube video of the office. And there's the Snapper article. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I will find it. Oh, yeah, Travis. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay. Okay. So, so really, we work at, out of this, like, brick <laughs> building. It's very small. Um, and when we need to take pictures or videos, we rent out a much bigger space. Uh, somebody else's office, actually. <laughs> this is the entire office here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, we'll get uh, last two questions, and then, yeah, we'll sign off. Uh, let's see here. Giving tools like Webflow help. Uh, giving tools like Webflow, how relevant is it for upcoming designers to learn code? Oh, that's a good one. Should it still be part of a designer's toolbox? Hmm. I think it's important to understand how code works, and it doesn't necessarily mean you have to right. learn code. Um, I knew enough HTML and CSS to where Webflow was like easy to jump into. Um, I think it's it's healthy to know generally how iOS works and Android works and the web works, but I don't think everyone needs to learn JavaScript or all that to be a good designer. Yeah, I'd say it helps to if you're especially if you're working on web projects or if you're working on a team with engineers, it helps to know their language um, and know what you know what to deliver. And it helps you if if you're actually designing websites. Uh, helps you to design things that are within constraints. Um, it, it really depends really what you're working on because if you're, if you're not working on websites, if you're working on mobile apps, um, you, it's a different, you have to think differently. Um, yeah. You may not need to understand you know, HTML and CSS concepts, but you may need to understand how things reflow on mobile devices or um, you know, interface builder or whatever. Um, so, yeah, it really depends. And that's also where university uh, web code is just a perfect place to start. Like, if you want to know a little bit about <laughs> There's a code, picture to check out <laughs> universitylab.com. <laughs> <laughs> nice plug. <laughs> <laughs> Times three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you know that we launched this? You get, you get lunch today. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, one last question. Who wants to take it from the live chat room? Uh, still waiting for one. Unless you. 
unless you guys find a good one. Um, I mean, uh, Anthony's saying, please just build out a native e-commerce platform. Please. <laughs> yeah, keep, we're, we're thinking about it. Them. We're <laughs> thinking about it. Yeah. What would you? Okay, Anthony. <laughs> um, Barnaby's asking, do people apply to Webflow or does Webflow find you? He <laughs> <laughs> doesn't know. A little bit of both. A little bit of both. Oh, mix. both, both. <laughs> I think it depends yeah, for all of us. Yeah, I let it go. You got a Slack message. Yeah. I got a random email at 6.30 in the morning. Yeah, I, for, for, um, I did forum, Skype, and email. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, we have a history of hiring um, our yeah. people from our community because they've already shown, like, such a passion for our products, and it, it makes that a lot easier. Um, we also depend a lot on uh, our network, the people we've hired already. Um, outside of that, we do the normal recruiting that you would expect at any other company. And we'll give the last uh, question to this uh, Vlad, Matt Magdalen. <laughs> uh, hope I got that right. It says Nelson, why do you have tiny stormtroopers in the cactuses on your conference room table? This is not my conference room. I think this is yours. <laughs> so I don't know. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> Vlad said Sergio applied, barely passed the interview. <laughs> <laughs> that was a tough one. But you know, the tougher the interview, the it just means that you're, you know, sure. fought through and you made it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you didn't actually fight though, right? No. I mean, me and Vlad do fight sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I win. <laughs> Usually. Yeah, he's my, my brother. Right. If you didn't know. Yes. 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 Same last name, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, this is Magda Magdalen. <laughs> 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 anyways, <laughs> anyways, um, thank you guys so much for being part of this special stream. Um, if you guys uh, have any more questions, just post them on the forum. There's a forum link on the thread, and maybe someone will reply. You know, hopefully. And um, <laughs> man, this has been really fun. I hope you guys learned something. Uh, thank you guys so much for your time. Uh, I'm gonna do my usual. I'm going to do my usual outros. So, yeah, if you have any other uh, questions for account billing or technical issues, please go to. Oh, I got to update that. Um, it's not help.webflow.com anymore, no. it's university.webflow.com. And uh, where's the support thing? Oh, on the top right, contact. Oh, on the contact. That, that hasn't okay, changed. So that hasn't changed. I used that one. Big blog. Yeah, just with blog. Anyway, just so contact here, let me show you. How we all, all the old links will continue to work. For us. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, or, 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 or you can go to any article on the bottom, leave feedback, and you can include your name. Yes. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. There you go. We appreciate feedback. That's what we bring <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, if you have any account building or technical issues, do that. Um, <laughs> or if you have any design or custom code issues, please go to the community at forum.webflow.com and ask your question there. The global community there will help you out. And if you get your question answered, please pass that favor forward and answer someone else's question so we can all grow together. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Webflow app or on Instagram. Also on facebook.com slash webflow. This stream happens every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. I will see you next Tuesday for a rebuild of uh, interfacelovers.com. So thank you guys so much for being in the live chat room. We all love you. Thank you so much. And yeah, one more round of applause. Good job, everyone. Bye-bye. Peace.